After Allen Iverson stole the first game of the 2001 NBA Finals against the heavily favored Lakers, Kobe Bryant said of his longtime rival, We're all fortunate that Allen Iverson isn't 6 foot 5 or it would have been over for the league. That's it. Pack it up and go home. At 5'11", Iverson didn't have the strength to muscle his way into certain positions. Instead, he developed an incredibly tight handle and unique moves to be able to get past defenders. In rock climbing, the idea of replacing sheer strength with technique and body positioning isn't unique. We've seen it from climbers like Lynn Hill and Adam Andre before, but no one is a more vocal proponent of it, and no one has utilized it better than Dave Graham. Over the past 20 years, Dave Graham has been one of the leading sport climbers and boulders in the world with a sense like Biography, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Jade. What's always struck me about Graham, aside from his hardest sense, is how well he's able to bounce between different styles. Whether it's the technical, slippery climbing of Seuss, the crimpy strength of Jade, or the brutal overhung features of Ali Hulk, he manages to thrive on a variety of different routes. Throughout the past two decades, Graham has perfected his own type of climbing that places a heavy emphasis on fluidity, body placement, and intelligence, and it's helped him to climb some of the hardest routes in the world without relying too much on his power. This is my breakdown of the self-proclaimed weak bastard who somehow sent 514 in his first year of climbing. This is the vision of Dave Graham. Hey guys, welcome back to Climbing Styles, where we break down the best climbers in the world to try to find what makes them unique. Today we're looking at Dave Graham, whose technical skill and smooth climbing make him one of my absolute favorite climbers to watch. A skier originally who discovered climbing in the late 90s, Graham was part of the generation of boulders and sport climbers who helped to bring climbing into the limelight in the early 2000s. Along with names like Chris Sharma, Daniel Woods, and Pachi Usobiaga, he set new standards in the sport as he pushed the 515 grade and established tens of boulders in the V14 and up range. Even from the early days of his climbing career, Graham had an aversion to relying on strength to make it through difficult moves. It's where his nickname The Wizard came from, and you can hear him explaining this concept in an old interview. I'm a skinny person, I'm not like... Yeah. I mean, when I watch some big dude, some really strong guy do a boulder problem, I'm not very surprised. I'm like, well, yeah. But when you're a skinny bastard and you do it right afterwards and you, you yeah. do it better, then you're like, yeah. there's some wizardry for you, yeah. man. That's some wizard shit. And there's yeah. a way, and you use your foot like this and your leg like this, and you focus and you concentrate and you're, and you're motivated. Yeah. And then that would be the kind of, like, the application, that would be like the kind of example. The only time when wizardry would exist was when we would do things that were a little like out of the ordinary, you know, yeah. something on a second level, you know, something that wasn't explainable. It was like more like, well, that's fucked up. How'd you do that? Basically, Graham is saying that he wants to be the type of climber who, when you see him do a difficult sequence, is almost confusing to watch. When you look at someone like Chris Sharma throw a big move and stick it, it just makes sense. Here's a really strong guy doing really strong moves. With Graham though, he doesn't have that same burliness, and so when he sends something hard, it's almost like magic. For Graham, this idea goes deeper than being deceptively strong. He doesn't want to be able to do the same types of moves as Sharma, just with less muscle mass. He wants to use his footwork and really minuscule body positioning to find workarounds so he doesn't have to do those big moves in the first place. This is what he's built the foundation of his climbing on, and he's really, really good at it. For a good example of what I mean, check out this clip of him trying Wheel of Wovo along with Webb and Woods. Look at how Jimmy Webb just punches his way through the sequence, throwing out to the crimp, cutting his feet, and holding himself in place with sheer strength. Then watch as he traverses under this bulge. Once he gets his hands on the sloper, he basically just locks off with the left and holds his body there until he can make it to a better hold. Now watch Graham try. On the first move, he almost gastons the hold, locking on his shoulder and keeping his feet high until he can work both hands over. Then watch him on the bulge section. Look at how close he keeps his body to the wall and the counter tension he's creating with the right toe hook and the left knee bar so that he can effortlessly move his left hand up and secure the position. His understanding of where his body is at all times and how the smallest movement can make a difference in terms of his weight distribution is next level. One of the things that Graham really likes is crossing through with his legs. 
He loves these long high steps that keep three points on the rock while allowing him to get to the correct handhold. Look here where he does this super high flag just to get his right hand established before dropping down again to move up. He's also really good at finding knee bars and he uses them super creatively. Look at him here on Alley Hulk where he moves through the positions while having a knee bar locked in. It's less of a static rest for him and more like any other type of foothold where he uses it to hold a position as he moves. It's little adjustments like these that really allow Graham to thrive. Projecting to him is a lot less about specified training or repeated attempts. It's about trying the sequences over and over, dialing in the exact right beta to allow him to move through it all. He rarely strength trains and almost never climbs indoors, and he's spoken about not wanting to add too much muscle mass out of fear that the weight would cause a pulley injury. The secret to his climbing comes almost entirely down to his beta reads and how technical he is on the rock. A good example of this was Biography, which Graham was the fourth person to ever send. He tried multiple different sequences on the crux section because he said the holds felt too slippery for him to use the same beta as Sharma. Instead, he goes way right here on a couple of intermediates and then uses a series of long moves to pull through the crux. Again, look at how smooth he is when he climbs. Every foot is precise, every movement is calculated, and everything is designed to keep his hips as tight as possible to the wall and put as little weight as necessary on his hands. It's a really beautiful style of climbing and one that was somewhat at odds with the other best climbers in the world in the early 2000s. Another thing that Graham does a lot of is what I would call a reach back. After making a long move, he tends to reach back to the hold he was on and use it almost as a counter pressure to establish this new position or hold him in place as he moves a foot. Here's him doing it on alley extension. He makes a big move with his left hand and then drops the right low below where it was previously using an undercling to get his toe hook in place. This to me is what sets Dave Graham apart. Not necessarily that he does these moves because just about anyone can do them, but his ability to spot them especially on Alley Hulk where there's just so many ledges and huecos and potential places to put your body. This is a major part of outdoor climbing, finding the best way to use the available features in order to make a move go. Especially when you're pioneering new routes or working something at the edge of your limit, it can be a super time consuming process and it takes a lot of imagination and understanding of basic climbing techniques to be able to do it. Spotting the right holds and moves can make a huge difference in how hard a climb ends up being. Again, a massive part of this is just vision. It's not being able to hold positions, it's having the understanding of the rock, the creativity, and the experience to find those positions in the first place, and then the flexibility and strength to make them work. This is what I was talking about when I said the vision of Dave Graham. There are other stronger climbers out there, people with really good technique, but his understanding of where to put his body in order to best distribute his weight and the minuscule adjustments he needs to make in order to pull off hard sequences is absolutely incredible. To me, there is no better example of this than the opening section of Alley Hulk. I mean, just look at him climb. He's so smooth and his movements are just so fluid. Moving multiple body parts at a time, keeping his hips close, never wasting a foothold or having to power his way through anything. He looks like a spider swarming up the wall. The way he's able to spot the best position for his body amongst a sea of different potential holds is just incredible to watch. Now, the wizard wasn't my title. It's something that Graham came up with, and while he acknowledges that he's not actually magical, it was deeper than just a gimmick to him. The wizard philosophy is what he built his climbing career on, this determination to never rely too much on strength and to use his creativity and technique to move through sequences in a way that no one else could see. It's absolutely unreal and it's what has allowed him to be, to this day, one of the best climbers in the world and that is the vision of Dave Graham.